Oh, there we go. Okay, so we are continuing with pandas. So um, I'd recommend at the first, for now, you watch us as we type. And then when it comes time to exercise, you work because we're gonna be typing fast and I don't think you can keep up where this is more a demo than a type along right now. So with that being said, where's our starting point? So um, we first yes. wanted to demonstrate <clears throat> some extra data frame properties, which was the merging of data frames. Is that correct? Yeah. OK. So a merge, if you know the concept from SQL or things like that, it will make sense. But let's show what it is yeah. visually. So we're using the That's runner examples. So okay. import pandas. So this is from yesterday, just. And this is the runner. Right. Okay. Yes. And if we run this, what do we see? It's also printed. There so we, we see runners with distance and time. So if we scroll down a little bit under the working with data frames, we see an age data frame, which has different, for each runner, it has the age. So notice the runner column okay. is the same among both of them. So we want to match up these datas and connect. Algarno, can you close the sidebar? Ah, uh, yes. OK. Yes. OK, there we go. Um, OK, so what happens when we merge them? So we take the parent data frame, and what we want to add to it is age. We say age. we connect age to it, and the runner column is the thing that matches up. And if we run this, we see. Uh, does it return it directly? Yes, it does. OK. So this returns it directly. It probably doesn't modify the original data frames, but we see now age has been connected to the runners everywhere it should be. Okay. And yeah, that's that that's the idea of merge. And there's all kinds of these tools that you can find in pandas to do almost everything you can. I mean it's the same kind of tools you'd find in other things like SQL and so on. But if you ever find yourself going and manually doing this kind of data processing thing, connecting tabular or tidy data, then maybe take a step back and see should we be doing it with pandas instead? So our next demo is about time series. <clears throat> so what does this mean? So a time series is something where there is uh, data which occurs periodically over time. And this is one of the original major use cases of pandas. So it has pretty good support there. Um, so First, we will load this CSV file from the web, which has information on all the Nobel Prize winners. So when we run this, we can see something. And we see there's, yeah. well, like we expect, <clears throat> first name, names, born, died, born, country, all these kinds of things. So the thing is that these born and died columns it looks like dates to us, but the computer doesn't interpret them as dates. So we can tell pandas this should be a date time column. So there's this next little bit here we can copy. There we are. And if we run this and then do a head of the Nobel Prize again. So it looks pretty similar. But if we do an info now, Nobel.info. So okay. notice that born, died, and year, they're all now date time 64 objects, which means, mm -hmm. so before they were object like the other ones. So that means pandas knows that these are actually date time objects. And under the hood, these are actually NumPy types. 
So we can do some extra things now. So for example, if we do for Just each of these date time columns, there's a dot dt attribute, which means interpret this as a Python date time. And we can do things like day, okay. let's see. And it tells us, oh, it's the day it's of the, the month. integer of the day out of there. Yeah. We can do year. Yeah, that looks yeah. okay. Yeah. And even things like weekday, which this comes from the Python date time object. And I guess that will also define what it actually means in there. Yeah, so it's like it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. Mm, yeah. Uh, but represented okay. as a number. Yeah. So since these are date times, we can do things like arithmetic on them. So the next thing down here yes. is how we can subtract them. So we're subtracting the born and died years, converting it to days, dividing that by 365 to make years, and then taking rounding it to, by one. So I guess we want to run noble.head or something like that. Yeah, OK, yeah. Let's do good point. Because this just added a lifespan column. Oh, and then somewhere there, there's probably lifespan. It's the yeah. last one. And that seems pretty reasonable looking. So what do we do with this lifespan now? So we have an integer lifespan. So we can do things like plot, like make plots out of it. So for example, let's make this histogram. Okay. So column lifespan, we specify some bin size and so on. And OK, yeah, looks like yeah. reasonable ages for relatively well-off people from uh, the last century. And next off, let's do something else. So since we have a column that specifies what category of prize they've got, there's all kinds of things built in, mm -hmm. like plotting the lifespan split up by category. OK. So how does this look? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, the statistics are not that great. So I don't think you can actually draw inferences. But um, <laughs> yeah, you see some interesting data. <clears throat> OK. So we're about to go to exercises here, these exercises three. And what have we learned then? Um, so basically, by using pandas the way it's made, by converting things to the right data types and aligning all the columns and making them tidy, there's all these different powerful things we can take and use, which let us do things very quickly. But remember like what I said back at the beginning. So almost every time I do something medium level in pandas, I do a web search to figure out how I do it because I can't keep it all in my mind. I know the basics like slicing stuff and so on. So just keep that in mind. If it seems hard, just take the time, read about it. And the more you use it, the better you'll get at it. OK, what do you think? Should we go yeah. straight there? Yeah, let's just go to the ex I, I mean, I don't have anything special to add. Um, it's the same for me. Um, I'm always checking how to do things in Pandas rather than remembering. And this goes for basically any library in Python. I get it's um, usually you don't remember how to do any complicated yeah. operations you check. Yes. There's so many things you can do uh, with these libraries. OK, yeah. There's a good question coming <clears> up. <throat> can we say something about the difference between pandas and R's tidyverse? So I don't know. Do you know much about R's tidyverse? Not that much. 
Um, well, I mean, it, it's a, oh, I if you know more. I propose we go to the exercises. Maybe we can have someone comment a little bit more after the exercises. So, yeah. Okay, let's go. So how long were the exercises supposed to be? 20 minutes 15 or 30? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. 25, and then we come back. Okay, right. I switch to the notes, and see you soon. Hello, we're back. So, yes, um, if we look here, we see some good questions in the notes. There's this one about the difference between pandas and R's tidyverse. And us instructors talking, we thought a good metaphor is that pandas is like what R does itself, and tidyverse is a collection of many things around that, like a consistent ecosystem of stuff that works together. And that's sort of like SciPy in Python. But really the philosophy is very similar um, of a bunch of stuff consistently trying to work together. There's some compatibility between them, like in the data formats, which we might talk about a little bit later today. Um, OK, there is various. So one thing maybe to raise is um, because there are these two functions for accessing columns and uh, rows, lock and add, uh, which we did mention yesterday really quickly. But um, lock gets you data, but it doesn't allow you to set data. And add allows you to set the data so that. Um, um... So if you try to um, try to say database.lock and then equals something, it will give you an error. Um, and then you should, I guess the error message doesn't tell you to use at, so you need to remember to use at, which is a little bit um, yeah. annoying. It's something you need to remember. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there is a little bit more in pandas down at the bottom beyond the basics. It's probably not worth us trying to go into the details here, but basically the idea is you can do a whole lot here. Um, there's depending on what you want, you can either get more power or you can get more optimized, um, like faster, and so on. And yeah, I mean maybe that's all we've got, and. Remember, if this seems remotely useful to you, read the 10 minute introduction to Pandas and get this perspective. Uh, yes, OK. Should we call it good and go to the next part then? Yeah, let's move on. <laughs>